Beyond the Buckles, real rodeo topics for cowboys and cowgirls. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Buckles. I'm Cody Hart, world champion bull rider, along with me, as always, my partner in crime, Nathan Gillen of Buckham Productions, Mr. Blake Skaggs from Missouri, and we've got Briar Hart on today. He, he, he's getting in on the social media side of life, and we've got a, <laughs> we've got a wild episode here. This, this could go in so many different ways, I, I couldn't tell you. And, and I've promised you guys on, on a lot of these teasers that we was going to ruffle a few feathers. Well, get ready to have your damn tail feathers ruffled. <laughs> I've got none other. We have, not me. We have none other than Super Dave himself. Super Dave Samsel. How you doing, partner? Great seeing y'all. And uh, proud to be a part of your podcast. Absolutely. Dave. One of the most interesting stories here, and I, I'm probably stealing a question here from Blake, but I think it's a great way to start out. Is it's a cool story. When did you start riding bulls? Uh, in the fall of '94, I got on my first bull and uh, was enrolled at K State. Sorry. So you was in college? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was enrolled at K-State going to college, and the only Cowboys I could find around there were the Rodeo Cowboys. And uh, they talked me into coming out and getting on some bulls, and and I wanted to ride bareback horses. And uh, I rode bareback horses for about two years and figured out it wasn't, wasn't any good at it. So, uh, And the bull riding was kind of paying the, the entry fees for the bareback riding, so I figured I better just stick with that. So. Use a late bloomer a little bit there. So, I mean, because Briar, you know, like I said, he he, he started young. I, I kind of held my oldest son back a little bit because I didn't – I wanted him to want it a little more. But you you started sure. you started late and, and stuff. And, Blake, uh, you know, you, you didn't – you rode calves a little bit. Yep. And then what happened? I just uh, – Kind of fell off and started falling <laughs> off, and not quite the size for uh, bull riding. So I decided to start buying bucking bulls and yeah. playing the ABBI for tr- junior fraternity yeah. a little bit. And yeah. I had a question for Dave: Is uh, when did you become pro? Uh, you started you got on your first bull in '94. When did you buy your pro card or buy your PBR card? Well, it was kind of an odd start. Uh, the fall of 95 uh john mcdonald uh stock contractor from kansas it was uh uh, he was a stock contractor for the bros and Mm -hmm. and if you remember the old silver shoots he Mm -hmm. that was his arena and shoot set up and everything and uh he'd gotten the number from our college coach and said he had some bulls to buck and uh called me and i said well how much are you charging and he said, charge. He said, hell, I'll give you gas money to come over here. <laughs> and uh, well, we st- couldn't get in the, the van fast that enough, shit. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I went over there, and he kind of asked, there were three of us, and, you know, hey, you know, which, which one's the best rider, you know, and kind of, you know, so I can get you on the right bulls and stuff. And I got I got on one and rode him. He was just right there in the latch, and, you know, just pretty nice bull. And, he said, hey, get on this other bull real quick. <laughs> so I got on him and rode him, and he said, where you been going? I said, oh, just these Jimmy Crothers and Vicky Long amateur rodeos and stuff. He said, well, Mark Kane was 90 on that bull a couple weeks ago at the BRO <laughs> in North Carolina or whatever, and such and such was 88 on that one. And he said, you need to go to these big shows. And I said, well, get me in, and I'll go. And uh Next thing I know, I was headed to Phoenix, uh, Arizona for New Year's Eve yeah. and uh, won me a little change. And uh, I decided to go. I drove all the way down there by myself and down there. And, you know, there's all these guys entered from Stephenville. And, of course, I knew the big name guys. And I thought, shoot, I'm going to drive down and see what the attraction is in Stephenville. <laughs> and uh, next thing I know, I moved to Stephenville in January 96 and. Uh, was playing pool with a guy at the bar there and he said uh, hey you want to come to a Super Bowl party I said sure you know I don't know anybody here he said well my brothers are having a party and uh, bad luck by chance you know it just happened to be the Carrillos 
But uh, so yeah, I, that was how I got introduced to Adam and Gilbert. Their brother Eddie was the guy I was playing yeah. pool with, and uh, I kind of amateur rodeoed there for about a year, and and uh, tore my groin, and uh, in '97 I, I tore it pretty bad and couldn't do anything. And Gilbert said, "Well, hell, jump in and and help me drive." And uh, no way from you know, a lot of people kind of laugh that I was driving for the Carrillos, but. <laughs> I remember that. To be honest, I couldn't have had anything better. It was, uh, it was how I I got to know the bulls, and I got to see how they entered, and I got to see how they screwed up, and right. uh, I got to see one of the most important things I I found when I got to go on the road with them guys. One, I was getting paid to to travel around and learn from them, mm-hmm. but was I figured out like you watch these bull riding stuff on TV, they show you all the guys that ride. Yeah. Or back then they did, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you thought, geez, these big name guys, they ride everything. But then you go on the road with them and you find out that they don't. And it just it kind of makes them more human, you know. Yeah. And and uh, I got comfortable, got to know the stock, stock contractors. And uh, uh, so then in 98, and to answer the question, I, so in 98, I bought my PBR card and, and uh, started going and and was doing pretty good you know and everybody kind of thought hell i thought you was just a, <laughs> a driver. some guy that drove for the carrillos you know and i said no i all right i just uh i couldn't do it for about six months you know with that groin and so you know as much hell as i give them guys i mean they they did help me out and they, they taught me a lot not all good you know but uh <laughs> you know i it as much as they helped me out, sometimes I think I kind of got prejudged in the in the PBR because I was buddies with Adam and Gilbert, and uh, you know they a lot of them guys didn't care for them, you know, and they were pretty opinionated. So absolutely, and and we all know the PBR is not a fan of opinionated bull riders. But right, yeah. You know, so you 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 you're that was four years, man. That's a quick from the time you started getting on to the time you turned pro four years that's uh, that's got to be some kind of damn record yeah i, I mean think, that, I that's, that's crazy be. yeah I, I i don't know i just i think it was just the maturity level you know uh and of course i was a state wrestler you know in high school and and uh broke horses you know since i was like yeah. 10 you know so i mean i it was an easy transition i think you know but yeah flexibility um, and balance and stuff yeah 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 wow so so you hit the ground running in 90 94 you hit you you drove a little bit for the carrillos and then boom you're in you're in the pbr how was the first year on tour did it go the way you wanted it to did it did it you know well the the first time i got to a a, a cup actually uh, of course i drew knock him out john like <laughs> two weeks after jerome got uh, paralyzed and <laughs> yeah so yeah it was uh, uh what's the old term uh you know strength by fire or whatever mm. you know uh, uh but no uh, you know it was it was fun and it was you know uh it was a learning deal there was a lot of uh oh ups and downs and tribulations you know and a lot of uh, you know just everything that a rookie goes through you know yeah how different was it going from amateur then into the pbr because you obviously you didn't spend much time in amateur if you just you turned pro in four years it was a you know but you got what you said you got to ride with the carrillos around a little bit and kind of got a little it kind of broke the ice a little bit probably yeah it, it really did you know i I didn't walk in starstruck because I'd already got to know a lot of the guys, you know. And uh, so, it, it, like I said, there was a lot more to just the learning process, you know, when I was driving for Adam and Gilbert, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I can remember that summer, <laughs> uh, I think we was in Dodge City headed to Colorado, and uh, there was two vans in front of us and it was one was jerome and the other one was your brother yeah and uh <laughs> jerome you know was the recent world champ you know prca mm-hmm. world champion and he got pulled over and didn't have insurance or tags <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that and I, I think your brother didn't have tail lights or something and kj P- pletcher was in there and yeah. just that whole group yeah. you know and uh 
I don't know, you know, he, it, 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 like I said, it came back to that more human part, you know, of, uh, Hey, the world champ here ain't doesn't even have good tags on his van or anything. <laughs> but he had his kinda, picture on that van though, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, that, was that the van he that he had? had on it or not. Was that the was that but, the uh, van that he had him on Scat Cat coming out the back door or on the side of it? Maybe. No, no, I think it was just kind of a plain van, if well, I remember right. Kind of like Ty's yeah. van, the white van. He used to get all them damn white Dodge vans all the time to travel out yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's what Adam and Gilbert had. Yep, <laughs> yep. They kind of so. followed along them. They kind of coattailed Ty a little bit. I think he tried to. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Ty Murray this, Ty Murray that. Yeah, they were buddies. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so why? All right, so you you had a pretty successful career. How many years did you ride in a PBR? Uh, see, from '98 till '05, I guess is when I I got hurt and got cut and went back to rodeoing. Yeah, yeah. So, is that why you left the PBR to go to go rodeo? Was because you got hurt or? A little bit of both. Um, I took when I got cut. I took some time uh, to kind of heal up, and uh, that's when they was inviting the Bull Nanza champions to the to the Extreme Bulls. You could automatically get in the big shows. Yeah. And being a former Bull Nanza champ, you know, I got in them, and um, so it was kind of it was like my ticket to kind of get back in in the PRCA and get qualifications up, and then in. Uh, so in 06, me and Spud Whitman went rodeoing. He just won Denver and called me and I said, heck, let's, let's go. And, uh, kind of funny. It was the first year I bought my card and, uh, was winning rookie of the year. And, yeah. and I was 36 years old or 35, <laughs> you know, and, 36 year old. rookie. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, I remember at Greeley, Hadley Barrett announcing, you know, Hey, this young guy here, every now and then these young guys come along and he's winning the rookie of the year. And Spud about fell off the bucking shoots when he was pulling my rope, laughing at Hadley. And, <laughs> and, uh, after the, the event, we caught up with Hadley and had a, an adult beverage or two. And I said, I said, Hadley, what, what the hell are you talking about? I'm a young guy, you know? And he said, well, I didn't think it'd be the same guy that I'd seen in the PBR, you know? <laughs> and uh, So he, I guess he thought there was somebody else with my name, but it, it's happened more than once. But uh, uh, I ended up, uh, what I thought I tore my, my groin again, I ended up cracking my pelvis uh, at the end of the year. And then old uh, Edgar Oliveira, mm -hmm. you remember Edgar? Yeah, I do. He ended up uh, uh, passing me in one rookie of the year by about five hundred bucks. So wow! Uh, so I, I did not get the saddle, but did you get? Uh, you got pretty close to winning rookie of the year in the PBR too, didn't you? No, I, not that I remember. Um, it wasn't really. Of course, that they wouldn't have told me about then. I don't think. Yeah, they they wouldn't have told me if I had anyway. But <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's a whole nother story there. But um, you know, uh, the second year, I, the the first year, I was an alternate at ninety eight, um, and then ninety nine, I went to the finals there, and and, uh, and then two thousands when I when I had my my best finals when I, I won was second. Say, you was close to winning the finals one year. I remember you rode locomotive breath and and some pretty salty cats that year. Yeah, yeah, it. Uh, um, I rode every bull except for one that had never been to a cup and that they brought to the finals because Cody Lambert had seen a video on him. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he hit me in the face twice with a horn, and I wasn't going to take the third shot. So. What was that bull? You remember? It was a Okeechobee wipeout. Oh. Uh, he was a big white yeah. high horn bull. And yeah. I, I think they, uh, yeah. they bucked him once or twice, and then they banned him. Yeah, but yeah, I was I was really glad he was at the finals that year. Yeah, yeah, lucky you. Lucky you. I mean, who else, who's better to get on him than Super Dave, right? Yeah, yeah, they're like, you know, uh, Lambert always says he hit. You know, it was a random draw, but he never said how many times he hit random to to get you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. good spinners. I, I I sometimes wondered that. You know, I 
I, it, it felt sometimes it felt like it was that way and i and, and i'm not saying that it wasn't it, it sure possibly could have been but it was sure funny some of their top guys wound up with some of the nicest bulls yeah yeah uh, in the six years i went to the pbr finals that that friday night i never got on them <laughs> the the good ones on friday night i got on them ones that they didn't buck again you know like <laughs> they pulled out of the out of the fucking hat after that but uh, yeah it, it was funny how certain guys on that friday night of you know tv round was yeah. you know drawing the red wolves and the uh, moody blues and stuff mm-hmm. like that on friday nights that I, I i could feel your pain i had rampage yeah. in hollywood and hammer a couple times and yeah, yeah. you know promise land yeah there's a few of them. We we could go on and on about the discrepancies of the PBR, and and don't get me wrong. I love the PBR. I love the thought of the PBR. Right? The the, the Absolutely. had originated right. The best bull riders in the world, you know, owned by the best bull riders in the world, ran for ran by and for the best bull riders in the world. That is the yeah. concept that continues to sell today. That's yeah. That is awesome, right? And I love the PBR. Do I agree with everything they do or how they do it? No, I do not necessarily, but that's the country that we live in. We can have our own dang gum opinion. But, uh, you know, in going through, you know, me and Randy wasn't always the greatest of friends because I didn't think that he was making some of the right decisions. And then, but at the time looking back, or back now looking back, I think he probably was the only guy that get us through there. But I still question some of the stuff, but I, I ain't got that degree. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think he did a great job for the PBR. The thing was, was uh, I'm a big guy on uh, treat everybody equal, and that definitely never happened there. You yep. know, in the um, fashion or the way that he treated people to get the job done is what you're getting at. Right, right. Yeah, there was. Yeah, he had about as much bedside manners as a billy goat. Right, right. Yeah. So you go from the PBR into the PRCA and take off, make the NFR. Um, what was that transition like? Was it was it any better going from the PBR where you got, you know, you're at the, you know, you go through the same events every year because you was in there what six seven years, and then yeah. you know you're you're going to the same cities year after year, you know, year in year out, same coliseums. You got a lot of the same fans, a lot of the same stock contractors, depending on what part of the country you're in. And, and mostly a lot of the same bull riders. Whereas when you jump over to the PRCA, you got a whole new set of bull riders. You got a whole new set of stock contractors. You got, you're going different places every year other than your big rodeos. But how was that transition to going from the PBR to the PRCA? Because it seems like, you know, PBR is, that's where the top is, right? That's where the best bull riders are, where the best bulls were. Was it a day off like everybody thinks, going over to the PRCA and getting on lesser bulls and lesser competition, I guess? You know, um, I'm, I'm going to say it's apples and oranges. Uh, the transition was easier going over there because I'd already built a name in the PBR. Right. So most of the people knew me. Um, that didn't hurt you. But though. when I went back to rodeo and – I'm sorry, go ahead. That that didn't hurt you, though. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but when you said they, they already knew you, this is back in the time when PBR and PRCA were measuring their peckers to see who could piss the furthest and keep it up. That didn't right. – when you went over there, they didn't hold a grudge on you or, or you know, uh, pro Absolutely not. You over, no, over, I, I, they welcomed you with open arms. I think I was more welcomed and, and uh, maybe there was even there, – now, there was a few guys that – they thought, oh well, he's the big PBR guy, yeah. you know. Tell me, you know, right? Um, but uh, you know, it, it probably did help a little bit, you know, having having people know me, you know, the contractors knew me, you know, and stuff. But the thing about when I went back to rodeo and that we didn't have in the PBR was when I showed up, they thanked me. Oh, we're so glad to have you here. Yeah. You know, oh, my God, like, thank you for coming. I'm so glad. You know, what can we do for you guys, you know? Yeah. And it was kind of a – kind of give me a rejuvenated spirit, you know? Right. Like, I felt like I was actually wanted there. I got you. You know, where the PBR, it was kind of a – you know, if you wasn't the top five guys, 
you were just fillers. They didn't care if you showed up or not. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, the PBR turned into a job for me there at the end, you know, it's, it was every Friday was an airport, mm. you know, a hotel and arena back to there, back to the hotel, back to the airport and then and home, you know, in the rodeo and it was, you know, seeing something new. And so it, yeah, it really, it really did give me a new spirit. And, uh, in 07, I jumped in with JW Harris and Luke hot mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, I heard it. I heard it told best. Uh, Pete Hawkins did an interview a while back, and he said, uh, "If you're the best guy in the band, then you're in the wrong band." And uh, wow, wow, yeah, it was that's a pretty neat deal. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I didn't. I didn't think about that. Absolutely. And uh, J.W. Harris and Luke were were kicking ass, and uh, and I didn't know them, and I just ran into them. I think it was at Greeley or somewhere, or maybe before Greeley. Uh, and I said, Hey, can I jump in with you guys? You know, rodeo with you over the fourth. And we jumped in and it was just an instant bond. They were young guys. They were hungry. They wanted to enter everything. And I kind of. Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was the old The grandpa timer. rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was kind of the old timer. And I didn't want to enter every 500,000 added rodeo, you know. Uh, I just kind of wanted to go to the big rodeos and, and, uh, you know, they, they kept me young, but the neat thing was we knew that van was going to, or that truck was in JW's truck. Uh, we knew that somebody was winning when right. we pulled up Yeah, and it was, a we carried a confidence with us. I mean, we just really, and me and JW, we were first and second, like almost everywhere we was going, you know, and, and, uh, then in 08, after we all went to the NFR, Luke ended up 15th or 16th, excuse me, missed it by a thousand bucks or so. And, uh, felt terrible for the guy. He should have made it. He rode way too good, but, um, then JW decided to go rodeo with some other people in, in 08 and we didn't have that connection there, you know? And, uh, he wore, he won four world titles after that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so he was, he was pretty good hand, you know? And yeah, and sure. then he went over to the PBR and, and did well, you know, I mean, yeah. so, you know, uh, and I guess where that story got kind of sidetracked, but, uh, you know, he's talking about lesser bull riders and, you know, I'd put JW Harris up against anybody in the PBR at the time, you at, know, in his prime. Absolutely. Guaranteed. Yeah. And there was, and there was, a, you know, there was a handful and, and it was just like the PBR, you know, there was a handful that were just a notch above, you know, the other guys that were going to the NFR and, and, uh, same with the PBR, you know, there's a handful that are going to win most of the events. And then there's the guys that are kind of, I don't want to call them fillers. Cause I don't think that's right, but, yeah, uh, you know, they're going to place and maybe win an event here and there, but you know, they're not as consistent. So absolutely. But, but yeah, I think maybe the early two thousands, the P- PR saves a little weaker, but, I think they're that middle towards the end. I think it, you know, you take top five from either one and, and, you know, it, it's going to be a drawing contest. This episode of Beyond the Buckles is brought to you by Sunnyside Graphic Designs, Cactus Rodeo, Print and Stitch Company, DEL Cattle Company, and Blake Skaggs Bucking Bulls. So what was the difference in between the PBR locker room at the World Finals and the NFR locker room? Uh, number of guys that were in there, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you know, uh, man, we're all bull riders, you know. Um, I don't know that there was much of difference. Uh, um, we didn't have the free beer. <laughs> <laughs> or the pemmican jerky or, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, with all the PBR finals I made, most people ask me about the NFR and, and, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I got fond memories of, of both, you know, so I, I don't know if I'm more fond of making the NFR because it was at the end of my career, you know, it, because it was the last one or, or what it was, you know, but, uh, I don't, know, it seems like I get asked more about the NFR than the PBR finals anymore. So, I got you. All right, so you've been to the PBR finals so many times, and you went to the NFR. At the end of the PBR finals, 
and at the end of the NFR. Which one was you more sore? Uh, well, I didn't get any stitches at the NFR, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was pretty fortunate there. I, I, how many um, times? Because almost every you, – you just brought up – just flashed my memory, and, and I was like, yeah, every t- just about every time Dave went to the finals, guys – Dave was always in there getting stitches. <laughs> I mean, ever ever PBR World Finals, I can remember he was getting stitches. Well, I wasn't the uh, uh, the guy that would check out, yeah. so no, I wasn't worried no. about if my shirt had a wrinkle or something on it. Yeah, uh, like some of them guys, and right. I was going to take the shot. Well, so. I never I, I I I watched you for basically your entire career. Um, I don't think I ever seen you look out, check out, or get off. Even when I thought you probably should have a time or two, I'm like, "What?" And I, right. I seen you one time. I don't even remember what bullet it was, but you was back on the flank. Your arm was stretched out, and there was absolutely no damn way you was going to make the whistle without getting hit, smacked, or a miracle happen. And Super Dave must have had his cape on that day because <laughs> he took a shot in the chin and it just it popped him right back on his rope and finished. I think he's like 87 or 88. And I was like, holy shit, how did that happen? But there's always that chance for that miracle. So, I mean, why not hang in and see if you can't get that miracle? A lot of these young guys nowadays, they need to learn how to keep their hand closed like Dave did. Yeah. You ain't got a well, shot in hell making was if you don't keep your damn hand shut. You know, it, it's, it goes back to paying for practice pools. You know, these guys are, you know, they're more worried. They're, they're more worried about their sponsor money and then they are winning, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, there's a, well, since we're not, you know, trying to be everybody's friend, like, uh, I remember when pistol Robinson was riding yeah, and pistol Robinson would nod his head and his head would come up and he'd. Yeah, he was bailing off in there and didn't care. And every bull that stepped out of the spin would buck pistol off. He didn't have a chance. Yeah, and I asked him, I said, "Man, what?" Because he's used to getting all these little futurity calves that just spin, and he goes, "The odds of, of them jumping out of it are so low." He said, "I, I'm not worried about it. There's another one tomorrow." Wow. And I just, I, I couldn't wow. believe it. I was like, yeah. uh, just had no desire to ride them if they jumped out of the spin did you ever do any trash talking to the guys that looked out did you ever give them hard times ever one of them oh yeah yeah. boy oh yeah yeah. boy there's my day right there (laughs) hey and 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 i rodeoed a fair bit with cody hancock and uh i remember one year at at san Antonio. uh uh oh geez i can't believe i'm drawing a blank on him uh redheaded kid from wyoming Went to the NFR a few times. B.J. Schumacher. No, he was from Wisconsin. Oh, okay, yeah. All uh, right. Uh, gosh dang, he was probably the best bull rider at the NFR that year. But you could scare this guy. If he was winning it, you just tell him, man, that, that bull is pretty hooky. You know, be careful. Yeah. And and he wouldn't nod. <laughs> There's times he'd – his old legs would be shaking, you know. <laughs> and uh, – Cody Hancock come in the locker room one night and he said, he said, he said, uh, what, what did he say? He said, uh, he said, you'd be a world champ if you wasn't such a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that guy just said, whoa, well, well, you know, he was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, why don't you nod your head? That's a great bull, you know? And, right. and he said, I'll nod my head when the good Lord tells me it's safe. Wow, he's in the wrong and, sport. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I don't know, unless you got some other voices in your head. I, <laughs> well, I ain't, no, we ain't all there, but, you know, yeah. Uh. But uh, and, and that guy, and, geez, I feel terrible. I think his wife made the NFR this year. Uh, and I know if I said his name, you'd know it. Oh, um, sure. Uh, kind of had long red hair, not not Jason McClain. That's who um, I was trying to think of, but I, I – uh this guy's a lot lot smaller geez and i i guarantee he 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 wrote great but you could you could get in his head yeah. you know there was a lot of them guys that could you could get in their head like i never could figure out how adriano how you could get in his head but how many times did i see him if he didn't like a bull or just maybe didn't like what he had for lunch that day he wouldn't put out the effort 
and he's three time PBR yeah. world champ and just I think he's still got the record for the fastest buck off at point six six or something. <laughs> How do, how do you buck oh, up six six? That's not even at the bottom of your nod yet, you know? I mean, <laughs> right, the gate man right. ain't even let go of the gate yet, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Jinx is still standing there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't run off, did he? <laughs> yeah, Jinx, I think Jinx had to help him up, honestly. Right, <laughs> I mean, right. They, I mean, Adriano had to get up so they could shut the gate. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's – I don't know, man. Them them guys looking off and and nowadays I just don't I don't get it, you know. Uh, and then I don't either. And, and the guys on the back of the bucking shoots, I think their traveling partners are part to blame to some of it because they don't call them pussies. They don't call them names and and razz them and and you know. I, and I told the story on a previous podcast about you know Pee Wee and you know, when you rodeoed with Pee Wee and you was a guy that went last or got bucked off or something you did the worst out of the group you had to carry a box of tan packs in your front pocket you know everywhere you went oh, until, until you beat somebody you know i right, mean stuff like right. that or, or if you bucked off you had to drive all night or yeah you know oh yeah you yeah. had to buy dinner or something you know uh I, I don't think and we talked to mason taylor earlier and they he said it's not that way no more said man it's 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 a, it's acceptable now to look out and get off, and it should well, they're, not they're, be. They're too busy. They're too busy filming, yeah. you know, trying to get a good so, picture for their Instagram, you know. <laughs> yeah. Or they don't post the videos. It's just the the snapshot, and it's the three yeah. seconds they stayed on. Yeah, and this is probably right, not right. The, the best guest I, I could ask this question here, but yeah, you know, and I know you're still involved with bull riding with the Cowboys helping Cowboys and stuff, and you keep up with it, of course, but. Back in our day, you didn't have to have arm candy or something on your arm to be a bull rider. Nowadays, it seems like it's almost a dead gum requirement that you got to have some yeah. pretty little thing on your arm to flaunt around, or you're just not one of the cool guys. Did I mean? And, and I know the reason I say you was the bad one that because every time we went to Del Rio, you usually had three of them. <laughs> so, and we'd be like, "How did Dave? How did Dave? What the hell?" <laughs> That guy's ugly. How the hell we got? How did he get? He's got to be paying them. I mean, we was taking bets that you was having to buy them and, and, and rent them to come hang had out. The with gift you. of gab. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I had the gift of gab. Yeah. yeah, it was damn sure yeah. something. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> right, right. So how many times did you get hey, to go to that... Del Rio, man? Talking about Del Rio. Oh, shoot, I love Del Rio. It's awesome, wasn't it? Uh, that was back when we could go across. Yeah, uh, across the border and. The last time before the shit hit the fan, we couldn't really cross. I remember going over there to uh, uh, Corona Club, oh, La Macarena. Yeah, the Corona Club. Yeah, and I had my picture on on the wall back there. Yeah, and uh, and the bartender said, you know, hey, what do you want, Mister Dave? And I was like. I finally made it. Boys. <laughs> <was a> big <laughs> time. They, they know who yeah. I am at the Corona yeah, Club. Yeah. So. <laughs> I liked it because the Bad Company boys were down there, man. They always put had Del Rio down there, and then it, the Bad Company crew was awesome to party with. And Heck yeah. You'd go to the Corona Club yeah. and La Macarena, and we'd usually get drunk and wild and crazy and wind up over at Boys Town or something watching the <laughs> donkey show or some business, you know. Uh, where, where was that at? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think, I think you give me directions. <laughs> <laughs> what Whatever happened to Bad Company? Like, what, they just disappeared. I don't know. I think Matt got a little old and, you know, kind of – I think he kind of handed it off to Bo Davis and Chad Beavers maybe, and I, I think it just kind of dispersed. I don't know if Mac still did anything. I can't like, – don't quote me on that. I'm sure he know. sold his card or something and, and yeah. they renamed it or something. But How big of an icon yeah. was that guy, right? I mean, how, yeah, he was how an did innovator. he help the sport? I mean, wow. The standalone bull riding series basically really came from him really is his yeah, bull riding yeah. after the rodeos and stuff the loud rock and roll music and the happening i mean that was yeah. if you was if you was a bull rider in the 80s and 90s my god i guarantee you, you knew who mac altizer was in bad company rodeo yeah and he had all his bulls named after songs yeah. you know and uh it was easy to remember him you know and stuff like that so and there was usually a lot of chicks around <laughs> oh yeah it, it, was, a it was a rocking it what was it called the rocking his show on dirt or something something like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was that was that was some good times well, I, you don't see that much anymore how about the way they presented they gave the buckle away yeah did you you did you you didn't ever win del rio did you 
Now I didn't. seen. Uh, I didn't. I can't remember who who the heck won it that year, but uh, well, most of the years there was some big, well endowed woman uh, with Hooters that went out there and she presented the buckle between her boobs, and yeah, that's how you got the buckle. So. <laughs> <laughs> now that's one of my right. that's one of show. my memories. One of my memories of uh, Del Rio is is sliding up, nodding, and beer cans are falling and hitting, <laughs> your, bull, and you're hitting your bull on the head, and you're like, "Yep, okay." focus focus yeah. Yeah. we're at a bull yeah you'd look up and and, and actually that, there was that expanded metal walkway up there and and uh yeah so beer would get spilled on you but you could look up and see some stuff too and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good scenery and at, at, right, at times right. and it's usually you know 100 and something degrees down there and i've you know that Del Rio was actually the only bull riding i've ever drank before i got on because you could drink like thir- you could drink three beers before 30 minutes before the bull ride, and by the time your bull was loaded, you was sober as heck because you'd done sweated that shit out. It was so damn hot. Right, right. Yeah, I can honestly say that that's one of the few places I ever drank before I got on. So Yeah, I don't advise one that. Very few. Any, any young guys out there, don't drink before you get on, but mm-hmm. uh, this is just uh, how the old guys used to do it a little bit back in Del Rio in the 100-degree heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About the only reason I'd – I drank before I got on there was because I thought I was going to turn out. I'd, I'd hurt my shoulder and and I, I couldn't raise it. And uh, I bucked off my first one. And uh, I said, you know, everybody's like, oh, are you going to turn out? And I said, yeah, shit, I, I can't can't ride if it goes into my hand. And they said, oh, that bull's right there to the left and latch. And I was about two beers into it. And I <laughs> thought, hell, I can do that, you know. <laughs> I can probably get by that. And uh in a good cowboy fashion i crawled up there and handed hancock what was left of my beer got on <laughs> audit, like 86 or 87 and and i ended up turning out the short round but uh hell want to check so yeah uh, that, yeah when i went to del rio either i want to check place good or got knocked the hell out or both <laughs> I, I i concur yeah i can give you a funny story and i wish peewee was on here to tell it because he was he was part of the 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 coup on this deal so i'd go to del rio we was in del rio and i'd i'd i was i don't know i was like 87 or 88 89 i'd won the long round right going into the short round i get walked this way of bad companies in the short round of course i'm the last guy out and I don't know. I don't even remember how long I rode him, right? I don't. It might have been one jump. It might have been six jumps. I don't remember, and I don't believe there's a video of it. And this bull, he knock, he he knocks me out, and I'm out. And I remember getting up in the arena by myself, and guys were still coming to me. So I'm I'm taking it. He rung my bell and, and scattered my chickens or something, you know. And I remember walking out, and they kind of helped me out a little bit. And I got back there and. Somebody had handed me my bull rope, and I remember hanging it on the fence, right? And I'm hanging it on the fence, and I'm about ready to take, start taking my stuff off, and Brian Herman comes up. He, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting my stuff up. He goes, no, man, you got to re-ride. You got to re-ride. You got I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you got to re-ride. They're fixing to load, load your bull. And I look, and right there where, where we hang everybody, there's a big that they had some pins, and then they had an alleyway run up there. Well, they was what they was doing. They was just moving some bulls around. Well, my rum dumb butt <laughs> thought that they was loading my bull, and people goes, "Yeah, they, you got that red bull right there. They're fixing to load him." So I just pull my glove back on. I start heating my rope up, you know, and I'm I'm heating it up, and I'm heating it up, and I'm kind of getting ready, and I'm in slow motion, man. I'm I am lethargic and in. You know, I don't even know where the hell I am, really. And Ross Johnson walks up and goes, what are you doing? I said, I got to – Pee Wee said I got to re-ride. And he said, I said, they're fixing to load him. I'm getting ready. And he goes, boy, you got knocked the fuck out. You ain't got no re-ride. <laughs> you dumbass. And I turn around, and there's my wife. There's Pee Wee, his wife. Ever, there, there's like a whole group of guys over there just dying laughing. They was completely totally <laughs> fucking with me. And I was like, you assholes. Hard having pals. I tell you what, yeah. it, it, is, it is tough having <laughs> friends, I promise you. Yeah, they give me some business there. But I always loved going to Del Rio, though. That was I wished it would go back to that because 
Did you go to it when when it was PRCA sanction or extreme? Uh, I never went to the De La Goss. Uh, I went to Del Rio when it was a CBR. Yeah. a couple times. Now was it the same uh, party? Because I never went when it was a CBR. I always it was it was a PBR all the time. But it it wasn't because that's when nobody would go across the border. Yeah, I got. So you. it wasn't as big a deal. I mean, it was just. Another it was just ride. kind of another bull ride, to be honest. But right, um, isn't it an extreme yeah. bulls now? I, I'm not sure what it is. I think mm-hmm. it is. Probably, yeah. yeah probably, I, I would yeah. think. I, did, I just wondered that, that, if the whole atmosphere was still there, but I guess not being able to go to the Corona Club or cross the border and and do all the festivities over there, go to Mall Crosby's well, and eats. I, I love you know, and it, and it's it's all changed, you know. Uh, 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 two years ago, me and a group of guys, Turnbow and some other guys, all flew to Nashville for a little weekend of golf. And it was the weekend the PBR was there. And we thought, well, hell, let's, yeah, we'll go to the show. And, you know, Cody Custer was like a shoot boss or something. And, you know, we came down. We actually sit in the stands for a while. That was kind of weird. But, <laughs> uh, it is. you know, we came down after it was over. And I was like, hey, where y'all going? Like, what's, where's the after party? And they said, they looked at me and JB was about one of the few guys I know. I said, JB, what's everybody doing? He said, Oh, they don't do anything anymore. <laughs> wow. And I was like, well, shit. This is boring. Who'd want to, I wouldn't yeah. have made it that long in the PBR if they didn't do anything. Right. Afterwards. If they didn't have an after party or, or we just, somebody would wind up going and buying several cases of beer and, and hang out, and, and and hang out in a, well, we, they had free beer in the locker room back then, but when they, when the Coliseum finally kick us out, we would go to the to the hotel and in the lobby or whatever and just somebody would bring a guitar or something and there would be cases of beer in there and we'd just sit and drink till two or three o'clock in the morning and, and then go to bed i mean the party never ended yeah yeah that's not yeah, like it, that no more no no it's not you know like the the PBR was kind of hard on my liver because if I did good, <laughs> we celebrated. And then, and then I was sponsored by Anheuser Busch for a while, you know. So I'd I'd get paid to go to the bar after the bull riding, you know. Yeah. Uh, but so if I won, I'd celebrated. If I didn't win, you drowned if I your lost, sorrows. Yeah, I'd drown your sorrows. And if you just did okay, one of your buddies won. Yeah. You know, so you got to go celebrate with them. Right. Yeah, I, yeah mean, was, I had Jack Daniels for a little bit and had to go to them autograph signing and stuff at the bar. And, yeah, either way, there was always a reason to drink and party and hang out with your buddies. <laughs> I mean, shoot, back then we lived like rock stars, man. Oh, man. And now, Nashville oh, Nashville yeah. was definitely used uh, to be a fun event. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, there's a story about me and you, too, out in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> and Razor, yeah. our good yeah, buddy Razor. Razor. <laughs> yeah yeah that was the one chance i had to to go uh go to the hotel with his ex-girlfriend kim <laughs> yeah yeah it didn't she, work out she was mad yeah she, she was mad at right him <laughs> yeah she said i'm going with you and for some reason i thought friendship was more important and <laughs> yeah. boy, i yeah, hate well, myself now yeah. <laughs> but i remember when we let when we left the gentleman's club there that uh he went to get into the front seat and she told him no get in the back because that's where her dog rode and you're gonna <laughs> yes. you're, you're less than a dog you get in the back and ride to where the dog rides <laughs> but how many good times yeah razor they, they don't make another razor like that you, you know, we're talking about old times but razor fit right in that era I mean, yeah, how many yeah. times in Vegas did we catch him sitting at the at the same table for a day and a half or something? Right. You know, a uh, funny story. One time uh, there towards the end of my PBR career when him and I was kind of, you know, in the PBR, you'd say you traveled with people, but yeah. it's actually, you know, you showed up. You kind of just them. got the same. Yeah, you yeah. got the same flights or whatever, you know, Um and I got to the point where we had to start driving separate because Razor would never make the flight home. Oh, yeah. And if he drove us to the airport, I was screwed. You know? Yep. yep. <laughs> so uh, so that changed. But uh, uh, I remember one time we was at the finals and, and Razor was gambling and and he thought he was winning. And he said, uh, we got home, Stephen Bill, and he said, he said, you know what, Cody Custard's wife? <laughs> I, I didn't realize she was such a gambler. 
And I said, oh, man, I don't know. He said, I know she kept getting chips from me, you know, kept borrowing him. He said, you know, hell, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how much I gave her. Well, I think at the first event, like a month later or something, Cody Custer came and brought Jim a check for like $5,600. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just putting them chips in her pocket and yeah. and cashed them out and, and wrote him a check. And, hell, he's never so happy. But, you know, everybody's always taking care of that guy. Oh, yeah. I, I, I traveled with him for about two weeks. I picked him up at uh, at a gentleman's club in DFW and took him to the airport, and we got on a plane, went bull riding, come back. I dropped him back off at the gentleman's club. <laughs> and, and then the next week I did the same, and I told Jim, I was asked, I told Rice, man, Razor, I can't keep doing this, bud. I can't do it. And, it, you know, it was a revolve. I mean, he had the black book and everything for every girl in town. And, I mean, I was like, Razor, come on, man. Yeah, I was, I, I don't know if I was, I felt uh, privileged to rodeo with him or if it was more of a hindrance, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, you never knew, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, he, he one of the greatest for sure, yeah, you know, if not the greatest, but, you know, great guy, just sometimes had his priorities uh, a little off. <laughs> he he was so natural just and, and rode him with such ease and but boy i tell you what i i don't know what's more which is more fun to talk about him riding bulls or his after the bull riding curricular activities you know because <laughs> they was they're all good there was never a dull moment when razor was around we uh one of our favorite memories of razor me and boy turnbo uh we was at columbus ohio Oh, and uh horse do, you, do you remember that that hotel you know it's like a big horseshoe yeah you could look down 15 stories or whatever <laughs> yeah uh there's some some big girls that was in the room next to us old uh <laughs> old robin oh yeah and uh they uh they come banging on our door and uh like what's going on and they said hey razor's in a fight razor's in a fight so we we run over there about five rooms down and and but somebody else had already gotten there and, and they had a hold of razor and he's standing there and he just had a pair of black socks on. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was in the room with some guy's wife or girlfriend oh. or something. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Ra razor, he, he couldn't fight, but he got real tough once there was about six of us, <laughs> you know, around him yeah. then, you know, yeah. most bull riders but, uh, all around, they probably can't fight. They, they talk a big game, but, I know I sure couldn't fight. I didn't we're, like. We're like fight. chihuahuas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like chihuahuas. Yeah. yeah. I'll bark, no bite. Hey, well, yeah. One one of my uh, memories of a uh, of a fight was had your brother and McBride in it. Oh really? Um, they were signing. We was at one of them like Ram Central Station bars where they have right. all the different yeah. bars. And they were signing autographs out in like the little foyer okay. and uh it might have been north carolina or somewhere i think it was uh around super bowl time or something but because there was like me and tough and razor and a bunch of the guys were in the little bitty bar that had a pool table in it right and mcbride and jw were out there signing well i guess this guy was trying to get jw to let him wear his hat and jw said no and i guess the guy reached over and knocked it off jw's head and he was a big bald biker dude <laughs> and uh jw went to him and here come mcbride and jw crashing into the that bar we was all in uh <laughs> with this guy and i think your brother had him fish hooked or something or mcbride <laughs> had him fish hooked or something and tough and i was standing there playing pool and tough's behind me and he's he's hitting me in the back he's going <laughs> kick him kick him Stomp his hand, stomp his hand. <laughs> said, you you can stomp his hand if you want. And uh, Razor, you know, he's left-handed. He was there drinking, and they kind of crashed into him. And he looked over, tried to sock the guy one time, went back to drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I think uh, there was really never missed a beat. So there is one guy that could fight in the PBR that or bull rider that I know could fight. You know, and that's Troy Dunn. He, he was a golden glove boxer down in Australia. I mean, this guy's pretty tough. There's a story going around about, you know, 
somebody calling him mate in a bar and he told him told him not to call him mate no more and big lumberjack guy and he said don't worry mate i'm just playing with you he said i'm telling you don't call me mate no more and he messed around called him mate one more time and troy got up and put him put him on his back one punch and then sat down and finished his beer <laughs> and uh so well troy, I take troy was back. very intimidating yeah troy was intimidating yeah um you know, I was fortunate I got to go down to Australia a couple times yeah. for his event and a great deal, you know, um, was in one, one of the events down there. So that was great. But, uh, uh, when nine 11 happened, I was rooming with Troy and, uh, another Aussie called, uh, Casey Lowick. If you remember yep, Casey, remember. Yep. uh, and Casey Lowick was about the only one they would slap box with Troy. No kidding. And Troy and Troy was just quick yeah lightning fast like yeah i i wouldn't I, want to tangle with troy done not at all <laughs> none whatsoever uh, uh, yeah you wasn't yeah, a fighter. He's still boxing down yeah. there in australia and everything so you, you wasn't a fighter super dave i tried <laughs> I, I won second a lot <laughs> yeah. yeah you know where I, I was i was like i was like the other bull riders i was really tough and i had a bunch of bull riders <laughs> behind me yeah so so where did the name super dave came from uh you know i think justin mckee uh because i'd known justin he had announced college rodeos and some amateur stuff and was he went to school at k-state and uh i don't know if he was trying to uh give me a hard time when he called me super dave or what but it, it seemed to stick and and uh you know i guess there's worse things they could have called me yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hey, you'd said and earlier, they did most of them, but yeah, you said you said earlier you sponsored by you know Anheuser Busch or whatever. You had a beer sponsor. What was some of the other sponsors that you had? Uh, I was the first guy to sign that wasn't a world champion with a monetary sponsorship for Resist All. Uh, that was one of my first major sponsors, and they were great to me. Yeah. Uh, can't say enough about them. Um, and I had Luke Casey. And uh, like all the other bull riders, I thought there would never be a a day that your contract would end. You know, yeah, and, I hit them day uh, I hit that day too. You know, you I look back now and I got boots that are twenty years old, and you're trying to baby them so you don't have to buy another <laughs> pair. So. I, but, I used uh, to give boots to guys. I, I was sponsored by Double H for a long time, and they'd send me boots all the time, and I just give my buddies boots. <laughs> I got to where I couldn't ride no more, and I was too fat, and I just had to buy my own boots. And I'm like, man, I wish I could go back. I wish that old boy still got them boots. I can use them boots <laughs> no right kidding, now. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, I gave a lot of boots away from Lucasi, and I, man, I sure would like to have them back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, but, uh, is there some sponsors that, uh, you know, because I know the PBR was pretty strict on some of the sponsors. They didn't want, you know, conflicting sponsors with their sponsors. And I think right. I think there's something behind the story that we we probably need to hit on is is I think you had some trouble with that. Well, let's just say uh, Randy Bernard took care of his favorites. Um, like when I picked up Luke Casey, uh, Randy Bernard actually called the president of Luke Casey, Paul Lavoy at the time, and said, uh, well, "Why are you sponsoring Dave?" Uh, we want you to sponsor uh, Ross Coleman. And Paul said, well, Ross already has a boot sponsor. You know, Dave's our guy. He's with Resist All already. And Ross was with Resist All. And they said, no. Uh, he said, I, we want Ross to have our core sponsors. Wow. And and this is what he told Paul. And Paul told me, he, he said, what, what does Randy Bernard have against you? You know, uh, <laughs> there was me and another guy, Ruben Galenzi from Canada. That, Ruben, yeah. Yeah, um, that he, Randy Bernard basically said that, no, you don't need to sponsor them guys. You need to buy out Ross's Tony Lama contract and sponsor Ross. Wow. And yeah, <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, what do you say to that? You got the president of the PBR trying to See, basically yeah. cut your throat. Yeah. yeah. Did you, did you, um, did you by a chance run into him and? ask him that question? i didn't get to really confront him about it we we by that time we'd already had our uh mutual agreements of just avoid each other so <laughs> right you know and he he did it to me again in in 04 with cabela's um i went to high school 
not far from Sydney, Nebraska, and uh, a little town called Oshkosh. And uh, McBride. You're, you're kidding me. Hold time out, time out. I ran a ranch in Oshkosh, Nebraska for about two years. Yeah, yeah, that's where I graduated high school from. No kidding. Little bitty town had the S and S steakhouse and Yeah. 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 Uh huh. That's what's that what's that, the goose hunting capital of the world? It is. Yep, it is a goose capital. Right there, yeah. Yeah. Big old big old goose right there at the end of yep. town. Yep. Yeah. For dang sure. Yep. I'll be dang. I did not know I knew you come from Nebraska, but I didn't know that. How about that? Yeah, so when I was a senior, uh I was uh, wrestling with Cooper McBride, which was Justin's older brother. He was a freshman. (laughs) And uh, Justin was just this little blonde-haired kid that hung out at the bar and sang to the jukebox with his dad. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Uh, So, I mean, it's kind of neat, a little town of a thousand people, you know, and me and McBride were both from there. But, uh, so, yeah, we're at Kansas City at the Cabela's Classic. Yeah in 04 and uh cabela's was like hey we we want to get you and mcbride in there since we are from right there and uh sure hometown boys we kind of talked about it a few numbers you know and they said well let's see how you do for the event well i won the event yeah and they said oh this is going to cost us (laughs) yeah right and i said yeah (laughs) yeah yeah and uh Next thing I know, about two weeks later, they're not returning emails or calls, and all of a sudden, everybody in the PBR is wearing a Cabela's sticker. Yep. And where they was, they was wanting to outfit me and McBride. I mean, head to toe with the Cabela's. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like monster. I'm just, I'm just thinking six digits a year. You know. All right. Yeah. And uh, instead, I got nothing. Yeah, you had so. to wear the sticker for nothing now. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Randy Bernard. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that that's kind of how Tough got got outed, wasn't it? There was something to do with Wrangler and Cinch, and and wasn't Tough sponsored by Cinch? And I mean, he called and got every all the bull Probably. riders' uh, pant size and stuff, and went to the finals and was handing them out. And <laughs> him and Randy got crossways because you, you can't do that because this is a you know we're sponsored by Wrangler, blah blah blah, and. You know, of course, this is back underneath in, in the offices there in Thomas and Mac, and um, I, t- from from what I've heard, that uh, Tough told him pretty well where he could take it and shove it, and I think that was kind of the. Do you, do you remember Lambert's old speeches about take care of the sponsors? If you're going to buy jeans, buy Wranglers. If you're going to uh-huh. drive a truck, drive a Ford. Yeah, you know, that's. Yeah. I said, well. Don't you drive a, a red Dodge, Cody? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. that was Lambert's problem. He was do as I say, not as I do all the time. I got you. Yeah. I I just, I remember that. And I, I heard that that was what, what got tough kind of the, the straw that broke tough's camel back to get him, get him out the door. I think that's where yeah. the, the board, tough just, the board jumped on. They all sided with Randy and and kind of outed tough. Yeah, yeah, and that's there for a while. When Jim and I was going together, I'd end up having to ride home with Tough, like I said, because Jim wouldn't make the flight. Yeah, and so we used to talk a lot about that stuff, and and that's what he said. He said he said there wasn't no place for me. He said they was all just going to vote completely against me, no matter what. Anyway, yeah, whether it was right or wrong, you know, they were trying to get him out. And, yeah. He well, he, said, held you know, on to, he held on to a bunch of shares, even though after he left and started PBR or started the CBR. Man, I, I have no idea. Really? I, I have no now, idea. Now, you, did you ever own any shares? No. So, uh, in 2000, uh, when I had that good finals, I ended up 13th in points, and you had to be top 10 in money to buy yeah. finals. Well, the next year, it was the opposite. Uh I wasn't in the top 10 in money and they went to top 10 money earners. They, they made it <laughs> available. And I was like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> you know, and the, the very last finals, I, I had a chance to buy some shares and, uh, they offered it to them. And that's when, when I was hurt and got cut Yeah. and I thought, I don't know what it was, you know, 25 or $3,500 or something. I thought I might need that, you know, I better right. not. Yeah. 
Yeah, I kind of let. I had some shares, and I let. I let it go. I got hurt and resisted our relief fund. wasn't wasn't helping. wouldn't kick in. And uh, you know, here I am, world champion bull rider, and and been hurt for for a while and need some help. And I couldn't get resist our relief fund after I donated all kinds of stuff, shaps and vests and gloves and signed stuff and and bought stuff at their auctions and stuff. And then when it come time for me being in need and needed some help, and I, I'm you know, bull riders don't like to ask for help. You know, and I, that was the last thing I did. I I, I called. Uh, I think her name was Riata or Renata or I don't know. She worked for it, and she said she tried to get me in there, but just you know, nothing ever come of it. They wouldn't. They wouldn't help me out. So I, I stopped donating to the Resist Our Relief Fund. But you've got a pretty good. You got a pretty good deal going with the Cowboys helping Cowboys. Yeah, you know, and and you know, your story right there is exactly why I I changed and went with my own charity. We used to donate to the relief fund, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, same deal happened to Gilbert. Um, he broke his neck, and they said, "Well, you got a bunch of roping cows. You need to sell them. You got too many assets." Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that's like telling a carpenter to to sell his hammers. Yeah, you know, you're you're trying to that that's what he does you know like you're trying to tell him to sell his cows and stuff well then how's he going to make a living you know yeah and uh so i decided to start it up and and rather than give a couple you know a couple thousand dollars to you know a hundred people we try to select four or five people each year and give 25 or thirty thousand. right make a difference you know yeah to, to try to make a living and Unfortunately, now that twenty five thousand doesn't seem like much. No, you know, Not with the, the way market. No. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was five years ago. It seemed like quite a bit, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, you know, and and heck, I I needed it in two thousand nine when I had my shoulder surgery. I had a couple renter properties and and uh, had bad renters. I had six months of eviction these people out of my Dublin place and. And they tore it up, and hell, I had like three, four thousand dollars worth of mortgage payments every month. And mm-hmm. shoot, when I was hurt, it that got tough. And it, it I had to do a fast. fire sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did a fire sale in two thousand nine. Was the housing market crash? You know, I wow. I kind of lost my ass on the deal. And <laughs> it, when know. it went south, it went south, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, shoot it. So I so I've seen that side. So I thought, you know what? Like if I can help somebody and in our bylaws, it's set up, they had to have made a living rodeo and it's not the weekend guy, Yeah, you know, or not some guy that, you know, got on for fun or something got hurt or, right. or not, not some day working cowboy that, you know, doesn't have insurance, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's gotta be, you know, it, it helps. I'm not going to lie if they've been to the finals and stuff, but it's not a requirement, right. but if they rodeoed for a living or their family did, you know, that's, that's our main bylaws and, yeah uh, and the back stories guys you can't believe some of these stories like one one of the most personal ones and i'm gonna try and make it real quick and short i know we're running low on time uh dusty lavalley a bareback rider from canada last year got diagnosed with als oh man he's 40 years old got a couple kids and he's got to tell his kids like hey dad's only got three to five years wow um, that's tough. Dang. That is tough, tough. And tough. yeah, I mean, you know, and he's, of course, insurance won't pay for like uh, unusual treatments, you know, or, or right. speculatory yeah. stuff. And yeah. So that's the money that we sent him. He's using to go seek alternate, you know, treatments and right. stuff to try to Buy extend it, and, you know. Something, yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's. Well, how, and me with my new little boy, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of hit home too. You know, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine that. So, mm-hmm. so what kind of events do you have? You got, you know, I think you got some what some golf tournaments and. Ball yeah, we and, uh, we host an annual golf tournament every spring. Uh, this year it'll be the first weekend in May. Uh, it'll be in the DFW area. Uh, it's a two day deal. We get we've had guys from as many as thirteen different states come to play. Wow. Uh, from old PBR fans up in Connecticut, come down to people in Oregon, Washington, you know, okay. all over. Uh, it, it's a great event. I mean, we got golfers that you can't even imagine. Then we got 
you know, bull riders that try to golf like Turnbow, you know, like, uh, it's a scramble. So it's all about the partner, you know? Right. So, oh yeah. Um, they ain't no cheating. And then we have a, either. you know, we actually pair everybody together to kind of cut that down. It, it was pretty hard to watch for a while. But Nobody gets pencil. So now we play eights. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's, it, it, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough, but uh, it don't get it, wild and western. It don't get wild and western like that Tufts Iron Cowboy or whatever was it, the Iron Man deal. Right, the You're Iron Man. Thinking. Yeah, I partake in that a couple times. Did, you, was uh, you one of them that sank the, the golf cart in the pond at Canyon? I was west not. I was not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I was not Ty and and Ross that got in the the people swimming pool. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, them guys, the, those great ambassadors for our sport, you know, they yeah. they had us pretty much banned from all the golf courses around there for tough events. So. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> tough event there. That that was pretty wild. But yours is, yours is yeah, for an awesome yeah. cause. I like the stories. I like all that. Uh, man, I think you do a wonderful job. And actually, I was – it, had I not got called in to work this May, I was going to go. We was we was planning on coming and, and buying a team and getting in the golf tournament down there. And I got, you know, I'm, I'm a retired bull rider, so I got one of them old oil field jobs, you know. I, I'm with I you. I do that I'm with fun, you. so. But, you know, uh, Cody, in, in the last couple of years, it's really turned into a little bit of a reunion, too. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, we've had Gaffney show up. Uh uh, Mike Moore's been the last couple couple wow. years. He's yeah. living down by Houston now, so he's come up. Uh, just the guys that you haven't seen and you run into there, it's yeah. worth the, it's worth the weekend. Well, sure, yeah, I can't wait. And uh, yeah, I, I I think it's a great podcast. I think it was a great episode, Dave. Man, I love catching up with you. I can't wait till you hit you some bet. more of them, get some more of them events out there. I, I'm looking forward to next may for sure to get out there and, and be a part of it we've been playing a little golf a lot but uh man i appreciate you Heck coming yeah. on and sharing you sharing the story and what's going on and a little behind the scenes and man we'll catch up with you i appreciate it sounds great guys all right thanks Dave. appreciate you having me on you bet buddy hey guys if y'all like us and you like what we do and go go to our facebook page our instagram page and give us a like a listen comment share it get it out there because that guys that helps us that way we can keep doing this and giving these these good stories like dave and mason taylor and some of them guys that we get on guys go like and subscribe gives us a hand and tell them like always keep them bootstraps tied on tight and get ready we'll see you next time see you